Ivan Koloff was born Oriel Paris in Montreal, Canada, and raised on a dairy farm in Chrysler, Ontario. I was an introverted, shy kid, Paris said. As I grew into the wrestling character, I think I came out of my shell. Paris didn't watch much television growing up, but when his family finally bought a TV, he fell in love with professional wrestling and often practiced the moves with his six other brothers. At age 18, he would leave high school and start training at the wrestling school of Jack Wentworth in Hamilton, Ontario. He would build his body up to 230 pounds and make his debut at the age of 19 against Bruno Sammartino. Paris would be a late replacement for another wrestler that didn't show up and got to last 90 seconds against the legend of the WWF. He would start his wrestling career under the names of Jim Paris, then as an Irish heel named Red McNulty, until having the final name change to Ivan Koloff in 1968. The name was inspired by the fact that he looked a lot like Dan Koloff, who was a popular wrestler in Canada in the 1930s. Seeing the resemblance, promoter Johnny Rougeau would rename him Ivan Koloff, the nephew of Dan Koloff. Ivan would shave his head and grow his beard to embellish the gimmick. He wore furry boots and became involved in Russian chain matches. He also added in Russian phrases during interviews in an accented and much deeper voice than he normally speaks. Ivan Koloff became an instant hit, the wrestler that fans love to hate. It was during the height of the Cold War, Koloff said. Russians made good heels. It was a gimmick that worked very well for me. I got a lot of mileage out of it. By 1967, he bulked up to 300 pounds and was nicknamed the Russian Bear, earning main event status with the International Wrestling Association in Montreal. He feuded with Johnny Rougeau and won the Canadian heavyweight title in 1968. He would then move on to the WWF and on January 18, 1971, he would defeat Bruno Sammartino in Madison Square Garden for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. I was still a young man, Koloff said. I was 25 years old. It was very hard for me to grasp at being the world champion. Bruno Sammartino was an idol of mine. Just to be wrestling him in front of a full house at Madison Square Garden was unbelievable. To win the championship from my idol was unbelievable. But the WWF used Koloff as a transitional champion and he would lose the belt three weeks later to Pedro Morales as the promotion didn't want fan favorites like Morales and San Martino to work against one another. Koloff would never win the title again, but would feud against superstar Billy Graham, Bob Backlund, and rematch San Martino in a steel cage. Backlund, I'll be all over you, and you can be sure of one thing. If I get the opportunity, I'm going to come out with that top rope on top of you, break your ribs, break your back, your neck, anything I have to do to put you out of commission because this is what I want. I don't only want to win the belt off of you, but I want to put you out of wrestling because I think you're a punk, backward. Koloff would then move to the National Wrestling Alliance, winning numerous titles from in the Georgia, Mid-Atlantic, and Florida territories. Sit alongside the head. A lot of give and take. Russian is tough. Dusty is tough. It's a tough match. Give and take, and Dusty just caught a whoa! Well, may I just say this, that uh, after tomorrow night in the Omni, you may no longer be the Georgia Tag Team Champions. You're facing the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. Let me tell you something, Gordon Soli. The Wrecking Crew of Ole Anderson and Lars Anderson have got the reputation of being the greatest team around, in this country at least. Well, we're going to go out there and prove to the people Sunday at the Omni that we are the number one team because we are going to out-wrestle them, embarrass them in front of their people, and we are going to keep our title, show the people that we are the bravest. On each other. Oh, Oh, I'm trying to get out. 
Aaron Sr. Moscas, what do you get when you put the greatest Russian wrestler and the greatest American wrestler together? You get the World Tag Team Champions. Tell me what we got in store for them. You know, tomorrow, Canoodle, we got a, a job cut out for us. And these Moscas, they declared war against us. They steal coal off chain and they run away with it. They're nothing but thieves. Ugly Americans. Not like you, Pride of Carolina. All these Americans should look up to you. Everything you try to accomplish, you have achieved. And in Greensboro, we will defeat them. He would win the tag team title four times, once with Ray Stevens, once with Don Kernodal, and twice with his nephew, Nikita Koloff. With the addition of Crusher Khrushchev to the team of Ivan and Nikita, the sinister trio would be called the Russians and terrorize the NWA from 1984 to 1986. They would feud against Dusty Rhodes, Magnum TA, and the Rock and Roll Express, and the Road Warriors. But he is so stupid, so this American foolish, this pride of his is making him come out to the ring and try to attack us from behind. But this not too going to be to any prevail because it's going to end up, Kudul, you're going to end up in hospital no matter what combination you might get to come against us. Whether it be Road Warriors or this Slater or this Steamboat or this Ric Flair, this American champion, you are going to find out Nikita and I no, no, are going no. to end up with you want a call off of Gold Island? Nakita, destroy, crash, demolish all competition one by one. But if you want to be a coward, you'll have to live with that embarrassment. You'll have to face your family, your friends. Hey, Nakita! If you want to be this kind of a champion, make the hey, TA. Hey, look, look, look in the hey. ring. There's Magnum. What does hey, he want? Nikita Koloff, I'm not a hard man to find. I'm not backing down from anybody, and what I'm tired you of all your idle threats. So why don't you bring your big, bad self down here right now? Here's the title. I'll put it up. I'm going to take I you to pick. Hey, Nikki. But Nikita would eventually turn on Ivan in 1986 forcing Ivan to team with Vladimir Petrov and Dick Murdoch. Ivan, you've said you got orders from the Kremlin to hurt, to injure, to maim all your opponents. Especially Dusty Rhodes. You know, Nikita, there's a bird by the name of an ostrich that hides its head in the sand. And it believes that because he can't see anybody, nobody can see him. It is a good comparison for you. A scared bird, a scared chicken. That's what you are. You Ivan would later join Paul Jones's army and be the mentor for the Powers of Pain, the Warlord, and the Barbarian. He would later reunite with nephew Nikita and feud with Paul Jones's team, the Russian Assassins. Koloff would leave the NWA in 1989 and make stops in the ECW and Jim Cornette's Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Koloff would later reveal that he battled drug and alcohol problems throughout his career. He said, I had taken a combination of stuff that should have killed me. Koloff revealed that he kicked his addictions by 1994, becoming a born-again Christian after attending a religious revival headed by Scott Simpson, a.k.a. his nephew Nikita Koloff. Ivan said, I look at so many other wrestlers who have passed so much younger than me who didn't do as much as I did as far as abusing their body. I don't believe I would be alive today if I weren't saved. If I were alive, I would most likely be a vegetable, because not only would my body have physically deteriorated, but my mental capacity would have completely died. Koloff would retire from wrestling in 1994. His body would show the after effects of almost 30 years in the ring. His leg would be broken three times, his shoulders twice. He would have two discs in his back fused, two serious knee injuries, countless stitches on his head, and thousands of dollars spent on dental work. If wrestling is fake, I'd hate to see the real thing, Koloff said. He would retire to North Carolina and start a security business called Bear Security, a home-based business that sold a two-way activated alarm system for theft, fire, and medical emergencies. 
He would run the business before once again returning to the ring in 2004 and competing sporadically in independent promotions until 2013. He would later be named as a defendant in a 2015 lawsuit by the WWE after they received a letter from him stating that he was going to sue them for concussion-based injuries he suffered while working for them. But Koloff would die at the age of 74 after fighting liver cancer on February 18, 2017. Koloff was remembered fondly by everyone who knew him as a warm and kind man. His case with the WWE would be dismissed in September of 2018, and it remains the reason why fans believe that he has not been inducted into the Hall of Fame. <laughs>